Welcome to Learn at Ease. In this video, I will explain in detail the release of insulin by beta cell of islets of Langerhans when sugar level in blood is increased. So let's get started. In my part 1 video, I explained the overview of insulin functioning and its sketch is shown here. Then in my previous video that is insulin part 2 video, I explained the mechanism by which beta cells of islets of Langerhans produce insulin. If you want to know more about this sketch, go to my previous videos and you would find its link in the description. In this video I will discuss in detail the release of insulin form beta cells. Let me first provide a short outline on my previous video. Briefly, the insulin gene located on the short arm of chromosome 6, is transcribed and translated to produce a short peptide of 110 amino acids known as pre-pro-insulin. At the end terminal of this peptide there is a short sequence of hydrophobic amino acids known as signal peptide is located. With the help of signal peptide, pre-pro-insulin crosses the membrane of rough endoplasmic reticulum and enters the lumen. Here, the proteases will act on it to remove the signal peptide by cleaving the peptide bond. Also, the three disulfide linkages that are required are formed here. Once these modifications occur, it becomes pro-insulin. It is then transported to the Golgi apparatus where it is processed by a series of proteases to form mature insulin. Here the pro-insulin is cleaved at two different locations by proteases as shown in the animation to yield C-peptide and mature insulin, these is then stored in secretory vesicles that arise from Golgi apparatus. Inside these vesicles, three matured insulin molecules are bounded to one zinc molecule and stabilized until it is secreted which I will explain in the upcoming animation. The beta cell containing the vesicles in which insulin stabilized by zinc is shown. When a fasting person eats glucose-rich food, the concentration of glucose in blood increases, from blood, glucose will travel to reach beta cells of islets of Langerhans. Here the special type of glucose transporter named as, GLUT2 will import glucose into the cytoplasm, GLUT2 is a special type of glucose transporter which works in absence of insulin and apart from beta cells, they are also found in the cells of liver and kidney. Once glucose enters the cytoplasm of the beta cell, it will be converted to pyruvate by glycolysis, which eventually produce ATP, through electron transport chain in the mitochondria, this will shift the ATP to ADP ratio. Meanwhile, before glucose entered inside the cell during fasting, the potassium channels on the cell membrane were opened due to the high concentration of ADP and at this stage the cell membrane is polarized. But now as concentration of ATP increases as ADP is converted to ATP, the potassium channel closes and the membrane gets depolarized. This will drive to open in another type of ion channel which will import calcium into the cytoplasm, driven by potential difference across the membrane. The calcium that has entered the cytoplasm will cause the secretory vesicles to fuse with the cell membrane and insulin is released into the blood by exocytosis. This insulin will travel across the body and induces its effect which I will explain in my upcoming video. To know more about this wonderful mechanism, stay tuned to my channel. Hope you enjoyed my video and feel free to share, like and comment. Subscribe to LAE. See you soon.